I would just have to say, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I see it now. Raphael, Nick Raphael, Nick Raphael. Yo, did you get, did you get a lot of Ninja Turtle jokes when you were a kid? Did people say that stuff to you all the time when you were a kid? It was a lot of the Ninja Turtle stuff, and then there was some painter thrown in there. Okay. Like a lot of like, because Raphael the painter as well. Right, right, right. So yeah, it gets thrown in there. No, but it wasn't, was it an awesome, like, like Ninja Turtles are great. I mean, he I would think funny. it was awesome. It's great, but at the same time, like, it's like I never really watched the Ninja Turtle, so it was oh. never really like. I mean, I know what he looks like, but it was never really my cup of tea. Like, it was never really my cartoon of choice. Oh, I mean, at all. You you might have you might have fallen right in the gap of like too young for the OG Turtles and then too old for the reboot Turtles. Probably, yeah. I don't know if I would have liked the reboot. I, I think the young, like the older one, probably would have been my style if if I were to go back and watch it. Well, or are we talking about the new tur- the turtles movies, or are we talking about the turtles cartoon? I was thinking cartoon because that isn't that what it's, it started out as a comic and then it went right. cartoon and yeah. then it went to a movie. Right. Right. All right. So well, like- this is this is this is this is uh, <laughs> not. <laughs> Not your field of expertise. No, the not at all. So not if, at all. if this is something you want to shift from, we can absolutely do <laughs> See, I know what it is. I know what it is, but it just, yeah. But, yeah, dude, I was, I was a huge fan of, like, the, the I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but I used to watch the, um, like, the, the live action movie with the, the Jim Henson, the Jim Henson animatronic. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I was a big, huge fan of that. And then, and the original cartoon, and I, I didn't mind the reboot cartoon, but I definitely didn't really like the the Michael Bay reboot of the Turtles. The well, see, I had no idea Michael Bay did the reboot. Yeah. So this is like <laughs> <laughs> Michael that's Bay so did funny. two of them. There's two of them. And they, well, that's the that's the most recent one, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and like I, I've heard of them. And like Megan Fox is in it. And of course, Megan she Fox plays April that. O'Neil, but <laughs> it's it's weird because the Ninja Turtles all have like nostrils. They never had nostrils before. <laughs> what? Like, why did you change their? Yeah, their, it's a little their, weird. Their their I mean, whole their whole appearance now. They have, oh, that's so weird. That's pretty trippy. <laughs> it's like <laughs> not my Ninja Turtles. My Ninja yeah, Turtles exactly. don't have nostrils, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, so, geez. Uh, let's sort of go back a little bit and understand the the mutual friends that we've got and yeah and how we're connected to each other and then i kind of want to like i'll get into like talking about other stuff after that but right talk about how you're a part of that group i i don't i'm not really sure but i know that like you're friends with the the zombie crew Yes, the zombie crew. We can't get too much into it because of legal reasons. And oh. trying, like, but no, no, no. I mean, it's okay. Like, we can say that we're all part of a zombie film that's coming out soon. Okay. But yeah, so, we, so it's weird. So like, we can't say what zombie movie it is, but we can't. I, I, we can I, I say so. what it isn't. Well, let's say it isn't Dawn of the Dead. It isn't. Uh... <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. just name so, every zombie movie that happened. Yeah. <laughs> say that it isn't that. It isn't The Walking Dead. It is. It I think Sean we can the say dead. the director, though. The director is Zack Snyder, and that's right. fine. That that's enough. So if people want to go, oh, we well, have to search what this is. And you're gonna, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get served with some papers now, Nick. I didn't gonna, say it. Oh, I didn't say you gave it. it away. You gave away. <laughs> <laughs> you signed okay, an so, NDA, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get sued now. I'm screwed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, literally, we did this mo- like there was this movie shooting in Atlantic City, mm. and it was a zombie movie, and we all like all these people just decided to apply for it, and we get there, and first day of shooting, we start they take away our phones, right? So now we can't you can't sit on your phone while we're in like this holding area while we're waiting to go on set, which for 2020 at the time or it was 2019 at the time. Uh, is not great in the 21st century. You don't have your phone. You don't know what the hell to do. Yeah, you're so, cut off from the world. And guess what you're forced to do? You're forced to talk to people. Isn't is that, that is that when you started doing magic? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's when you started doing magic. Yeah, 
Uh, Were you, well, you mean, showing everybody your magic skills on? I did. In holding? I did. A little bit here and there. I did, but not while I was in costume and makeup. I didn't oh. want to get that all over the cards. Right, you know? right. But like yeah. when we're going to zombie school, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, there's nothing else better to do. So yeah, I did some card tricks. Yes. Because <laughs> we had this whole school where we had to go in and they taught us how to like walk like zombies for oh, like two cool. hours. It was yeah. great. That's it fun. Was, you get paid to goof off and act like a zombie. That's It's that's the great. dream. It's the dream job. Just to get paid to just play around and play pretend, pretend for like three or four hours. It's great. Did, did you watch um, The Disaster Artist? Oh, that's the one with, that's the, the making the of, uh, yeah. what do you call it? The, the Room. The really, yeah, The Room. Yeah, no, I did not, but I have seen The Room. Uh, there, there's a, it, was a, it was a really good movie. Uh, you should check it out. James Franco, James Franco and Dave Franco. And, yes, uh, yes. And Seth Rogen and there's a, there's a bunch of people in it. Did but, that uh, win an Oscar? Didn't it win I something? Win I don't something know. The award show? I don't know. But I know, like, James Franco, unfortunately, got, like, canceled around the time where it had come out. So that might have affected its popularity. I don't know. Oh, really? Everyone's getting canceled now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's that's not why, good. That's why, that's why your movie's not taking so long to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, literally. Oh, shoot. That's right. That's right. Yo, that is so funny. Dude, he was a weirdo on set. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean I, I've listened to him on tons of podcasts, and he sounds awesome. He sounds no, like a really cool guy. His, his podcast is great. I'm not, like, I was listening to it before all this stuff broke, mm -hmm. but it's just like he just seemed very like, business-oriented. Like, whenever there, we weren't shooting anything, he was walking around on the phone just talking to somebody the entire time. Like, not really. Oh, so they didn't take his phone people. away from him. No, of course not. Oh, no, God. Yeah, it's privileged, bullshit. privileged yeah. Hollywood privileged elite actors. Bullshit. <laughs> no, it's 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 all good. They don't trust us. The, yeah. Us little peasants down at the bottom. The the uh, the 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 background background actors, which yes, is like yes. the new fancy word for just saying extras. Yeah, and like every once in a while, is. every once in a while when you're on set, like someone will let it slip. Like bring the extras in and be like. <laughs> Hey, we prefer oh. to be called background <laughs> actors nowadays. <laughs> oh gosh, that's so good! Like all this terminology now, just insane, <laughs> insane. But uh, so, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell this is my first time ever doing a podcast. It is. It is. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know that. 100%, well, this is the first. Well, time. welcome. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe now, maybe now you'll have your own podcast. I like to, I like to grease the wheels for friends of mine who are really interesting to kind of understand the fact that they deserve as a voice just as much as we all do, mm -hmm. you know? So like your, your, your experience, your story, your journey, your point of view is uniquely yours and no one else's. So if you had the opportunity to kind of let that voice be heard and develop Develop ways to, like, express yourself a little bit more. It it, it kind of, for me, it helped me a lot with um, with having conversations with new people, and, like trying to understand people and like my my empathy. I guess it helped my compassion for uh, <clears throat> listening. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think listening is one of the biggest things and respecting other people's viewpoints and just like understanding why they believe what they believe without judging it. I think that's like one of the biggest, that's what they teach in acting. They teach never to judge your character. So if you're playing a serial killer of some sorts, you never judge that person's, I mean, obviously on the surface, you can be like, yeah, that's bad. But as you're playing that character, obviously that person has a motive behind what they're doing. And you don't want to judge that, I well, think, because like, that'll come out in the character, and you don't want to do that. Th this is all kind of it. Kind of goes into with the uh, the like script analysis and the the character the character breakdown. Like when you're looking at a character, and you're like, you every every situation that you're in, like every argument you're in, every every you know person who's doing something always thinks that they're right in doing what they're doing. So you have to find the compassion for the character that you're playing and you're going, why would I be this way if I were in these shoes? And then, then that's how you make it a little bit more believable that like you're portraying that character because 
Like, you have to believe that you're right in what you're doing. Like, that's what most people do. You know? <laughs> no, I know. I get exactly what you're getting at. Because like, it's, it's it's really weird because a lot of pe- a lot of actors, they'll, they'll read a script and be like, oh, well, I, my car- I wouldn't do that in real life. Like, I wouldn't kill somebody in real life. So, I, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. Like, obviously, you wouldn't do that in real life. Like, hopefully not. Bro, go work at McDonald's. Stop trying to yeah. be an actor. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Like the whole the whole idea is to look at the script and just like kind of just take on that character's traits. Did Did you watch the movie or watch the series Extras on Netflix? It's like an old oh. Ricky Gervais. I love Ricky Gervais. Yeah, it's but... Ricky. It's Ricky Gervais's show, and he's like he's like playing. A background actor in a bunch of shows. I gotta go back and watch this. And he's playing a background actor in a bunch of shows. And he's like trying to like cloud up to like he's trying to like talk to the names and like trying to be like, oh, I'm an actor too. I do other stuff that's not this background bullshit. But (laughs) he's like, oh, I'm a I'm a real actor. And like he tries to talk to the talk to the stars and stuff. And they always had they always had like guests on. Um I don't even know if it was one season or not, but I know like Ian McKellen was on an episode and Orlando Bloom was on an episode and oh, shit. There's a, there's a, a bunch of really good, but I know the Ian McKellen line, the, that's like my favorite thing of the show where Ian McKellen's like, you know, the things that I say, someone else wrote them. I'm just, I'm just pretending that I'm the person and they pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's literally true. That's yeah. Literally, like, if, if you boil down acting to just like a, a sentence, it would just be going to work, saying a few words, and then going home. Like, that's right. literally what it is. Like, it's like saying some well, words and going home. Well, they, they, told me to, they told me to say it. It's on a piece of paper. And you know what? If I say it wrong, there's a lady over there with the mm-hmm. paper in her hand to go, Hey, you know, you said that the wrong way, and this is the way it's written on the page. Maybe say it the right way. That's her job. Then she right. goes. Exactly, exactly. Like the when you said Ricky Gervais, I don't know that, that reminded me of his show Afterlife. Uh, it's about okay. like yeah, the guy who wants to commit suicide or whatever, and he's going through all this hardship. And like literally, the first thing that popped into my brain is like one of my favorite scenes from that thing. He's walking past this like children's playground, Ricky Gervais, and uh-huh. there's this little kid there, and he yells "pedo." Like meaning pedophile, <laughs> yeah. and he's walking by, see. and Ricky yeah. stops and he looks at him, and he's like, he he says something along the lines of, uh, "I'm not a pedo, and if I was, you'd be safe, you silly little ginger cunt." <laughs> and like walks away. <laughs> and it's like literally the best thing ever. I was like, ever, when I first saw that, I was there were like tears rolling down my face. It's so <laughs> fucked up, but it's so my, good. My one one of my one of my really close friends. He's actually he's actually lives with my sister like they're they're together now oh, so i consider, I, wow, okay. I consider him um i consider him like a brother-in-law now but like mm-hmm. when we first met and we were getting closer as friends uh i had my mom asked my mom invited me to uh the outfest or like the pride festival in new york and a new hope oh, cool okay so i went to to the to the pride festival like it's like a pride parade through new hope mm-hmm. and uh you know my um my whole family, my whole family's filled with with gays. So mm-hmm. I I I invited Anthony. I invited Anthony and and uh, he he was like, "Hey, you want to walk over to that Dunkin' Donuts with me and get a coffee real quick?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, let's go." So we went over and we're wa- walking and he was like, "You know, Corey, I want to just I just want to make it very very clear. I'm not gay." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> did you think that like I thought you were and like yeah. and you thought like I was interested in you because if I was gay you'd be safe I could do a lot better than you sir oh shit <laughs> that's that's literally oh my gosh that's like pretty much <laughs> word for word what it was that's so good <laughs> that's, so, <laughs> that's so good I love it <laughs> but yes I, I can relate to that 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 line I mean I wasn't being called a pedo but <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. Oh, that's pretty good though. That's really but, good. Hey, hey are you are you are you flattering yourself? Yeah, you, I am. Are you are you I really? <laughs> I think that that's a lot of where like homophobia comes from. Is like people are like, oh, you can you can be gay or whatever. Just like don't 
touch me and like don't involve me and it's like oh bro you're safe don't worry like yeah I, i'm not <laughs> yeah, nothing's I'm gonna not... happen right like relax <laughs> like, you're, you're okay. not what i'm after <laughs> right exactly that's yeah that's exactly what it would be <laughs> right <laughs> so so that's where you met joe and carly and nikolai and shane and yeah Teresa. literally the whole crew was through whole that crew. yeah and it's weird like i it was funny because i was actually separated from them most of the time because i was with like these other people that were having to get like uh stuff in their eyes and stuff get uh as Car- contacts as put in their say, eyes you you were on the fancy list <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's literally probably yep that's, yeah. that's what she, she would not say right? what they call the bloozer <laughs> I kind of just like kind of got thrown into that group later. Yeah, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I was like a red team. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they I was, I was like that on uh on the 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 movie that her and I met on was a uh, uh, the Halle Berry thing that was shooting. Oh my gosh, and I heard so many interesting things about that in in Atlantic City. I was I was like the fight security, and she and I would talk to her between takes, and then. She'd be like, well, you're on the fancy list. So we know you got a call time for tomorrow. <laughs> so I knew that she was probably saying that to you since you were on the red team fancy Pretty list. Much. Pretty much. So it was like I was on red team, but then I was like a step above red team. Because mm-hmm. now it's like featured. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, <laughs> It sounds so narcissistic. <laughs> it sounds so narcissistic. Well, it's well, like, look at me. Listen, Nick, I already know that you're humble. You don't have to you don't have to backpedal. <laughs> I won't. I'm not gonna do that anymore. No, I'm done. The, no I'm, more don't have to be apologetic for the fact that you, that you you had a part. You were you were doing a job, just like everybody exactly. else. Exactly. I was doing my job. There right. was, that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. I'm very proud of that job. So yeah. <laughs> so you did also a, a, a series where you were background and then you like asked about doing QA oh, yeah. or, uh, so, PA work. Yeah. So um, I guess I could say it's called mayor of East town. It's coming out in April. That's the only thing I know so far about like its release date. It uh, has Kate Winslet and um, Evan Peters in there. Those are the big uh, names that are in the show. Mm-hmm. And it was weird. So the first day it was actually after I, so long story short, I work at a haunted house during the Halloween season. We can get back to that whenever, but um, the day after our rap party uh, was the first day I was working as a background actor on this show mm-hmm. and we were shooting in Coatesville um, very cold that day it was supposed to be like an outdoor fair that we were shooting in and that's funny enough when I finally I linked back up with Shane, Nikolai and uh, Teresa and all of them mm-hmm. on that day and I, you know, I haven't seen them in so long so we really, that's when we really started getting close was that day because Nikolai and I were sitting at the same table so they put us at this table we're sitting there and like pretty much sitting there the entire day during their, sh- their shooting of all this stuff at this fair. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I was like, I, I kind of want to like look to see if they need work. So I was like asking around, you know, like if they needed help. And the second AD uh, pointed me towards the key PA, mm-hmm. key production assistant, who was in charge of all the PAs. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when they were like, all right, everyone head to the buses, all these extras are heading to the buses. And I make a mad dash like through these groups of people like ducking and diving and spinning and stuff, <laughs> trying to get to this one guy before he disappears. So I go up to him. I'm like, hey, man, my name's Nick. Uh, I was uh, extra today. I was like, I graduated from Penn State as a film major, and I was wondering if you guys needed help, uh, you know, with PAs and stuff. And he was like, here, take my number. Text me when you get home. If I don't get back to you, text me tomorrow. So I'm like, all right, I'm like sitting on cloud nine right now. I get home. I text him. I was like, hey, it's Nick. I met you earlier at the, the shoot. Do you guys need help or whatever? He never got back to me. And uh-huh. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So uh-huh. the next day, I was like, you know what? Little persistence is, is going to go a long way. So I texted him again. And he's like, hey, man, can you uh, come in Friday? Uh-huh. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so, and the rest is history. It's weird. So, like, that Friday, we, I go in. We have, like, a 1230 call. It's an overnight shoot in Coatesville again. Mm-hmm. And we're doing overnight. And I ended up, like, I got there. I think my call time was, like, 1230. And I didn't wrap out until, like, 530 in the morning wow. the next day. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a really long first day and it was really cold because I was an idiot and left my like really long jacket, like my big jacket in my car all the way back at the, this Kmart where we were using as holding. 
So I just you kinda didn't had, like, a bring your coat shirt. to Coatesville? That's exactly <laughs> that's the, the name of the place. I, broke, got... I broke the rules. I should have known. The should've rule known. is bring a coat. Even if it's the summertime, you bring a coat because that's the name of the place. That's the name of the place. You know what? I... A lot of jokes go right over my head, so that's probably why I didn't pick up on that. I'm pretty slow. That's probably why I didn't uh, pick up on that. <laughs> Should have. Dude, I was wearing a little skimpy sweatshirt, and it was like 30 degrees out. It was a bad idea. I was like living off of these uh, hand warmers and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. they had, the, in between takes, they, they put up these heaters. The special effects people had these heaters that you could just huddle around, which was great. So I was huddling around that like 24-7 in between takes and whatnot. And setups and what? So I did. I did one day background. I remember extra, you did that extra work. I remember extra that work. vividly. We were in Philly, no. right? Uh, I wasn't even going to talk about that that day, but I was. I was talking about a different thing. Oh, where okay, I, okay. I was. Li- I was living off those hand warmers, but it was like they wanted to do a scene that was like it was cold and it was. Um, it was like in a barn, and I was supposed to be like a cult member f- for. Uh, I th- yeah, I know exactly what show you're talking about. I didn't uh, see it. But... Servant. Oh, it was servant. Okay. Uh, and like it was like they had us like in these like robes, and we had to, like the all I did for the day was like I stood in this robe behind someone in line who like had the robe off, and he was uh flagellating himself oh that's great naked heavy fella flagellating himself with the like one of those ropes with the knots in it okay oh okay and uh i thought you said he was jerking off and i was like no 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 not not (laughs) not flat not like flagellating himself okay gotcha that's a i think flatulent flatulence no 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 filleting filleting is no he was the, like the flatulate, what what is it called when you do the slapping? When you like when you slap yourself, we, like it's like with a, a rope. Yeah, it whipping? was like um yeah. Could you could you use whipping? Yeah, but like there's like a more like fellatio. Fellatio. No, fellatio is uh fellatio is a blowjob. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but uh, look, I don't know what's going on in this 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 whole little little background thing. It could have been a snuff film or some type of porno or something. For a, all I know, he's a very flexible boy. He could fellatio himself. <laughs> That's some Ron Jeremy stuff right there. Isn't <laughs> it? He he had his bottom ribs taken out, like the yeah, old yeah. Marilyn Manson rumors. <laughs> oh, it's so messed up. So yeah, so you're behind this guy. Yeah, he's naked and yeah. he's hitting himself with a rope. Yeah, and uh, and then how was, I never how was got the view? The ass back. Oh, it was awful. I <laughs> just got to stare at his hangy balls from the back. It's gross. So no, he was fully nude. Yes, then. yes. Oh God. No, I that wasn't. Sounds horrible. I wasn't staring at his at his hangy balls. Sure you weren't. Sure you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like right up your alley, bro. Right. Yeah, he's filleting himself. <laughs> <laughs> just the thought of you behind him that's what it, that's what was getting them off <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i only did that one that one day there and uh i had a bunch of those hand warmer things i was living off of those but i did do the one day i saw you on the mayor of east town for that yes one. yeah i was just I was... all over the place that day i remember only being able to say hi to you a few times because it was yeah. just a stressful day getting people on and off buses all day but the reason i had brought up that that um servant shoot was i was inspired by hearing that you had done that that you had done that at mayor where you had said like hey i'm i'm oh, a filmmaker yeah. and and i'll i know i'm looking to get some work if you guys need some pa help and uh they were like okay yeah cool we'll get in touch with you and then mm-hmm. they took my number and they never got in touch with me see that's why it, it that's usually how it goes it's mm-hmm. that's literally the truth it's I think I just got lucky because I took down his number. Right. And at and that then point, I could be a little bit more persistent. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think ta- them taking down your number mm-hmm. it never t- goes anywhere. Well, I I did I was texting with one of the PAs, but she was a uh, she was just a day she was just a oh, day, day bigger. player. Yeah. So uh, she was like, "Hey, I gave your information to the key PA. 
uh, look out for a text from him, and then that never came. Yeah, yeah, because it, it sucks. Because I think I just caught that perfect storm. Because from what I understand, like our TPA was going through like PAs like crazy. He was mm-hmm. like sifting through a bunch of them, trying them out, saying mm-hmm. who worked, who didn't. So I think I just hit him right at that perfect time where he was right. like in desperate need of somebody that he yeah. could trust. And I think I just came along and rocked his world. So, <laughs> so how long have you been doing the TikToks now? Mm. So, yeah, so I started, I made my account um, April 2019. So from then on, it was just like, it's so much fun making content. Like, I literally, like, make content every single day for it. Yeah. So I started then, and it was just a progression of just, like, posting magic tricks. And then one day in December, I posted this video of this little box. And it was, like, this little puzzle box. And you put, like, money inside, and you close it up. And I was like, oh, here's this little puzzle box here. You can give to your family and friends during the holidays or whatever. And I was like, I don't know how to open it. And then, like, I was like, here's how to open it. And I showed people how to open it. And, like, that hit 500,000 views. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, this is, like, big. So then I gained over, like, 12,000 followers from that. I was like, wow, this is great. This is awesome. So then I just kept posting content. And then I posted the same video, or I redid the video in April, this past April. I remade the video or whatever, and that was my first video that hit 1 million views. And I started freaking out because then I hit 25,000 followers. And then I went on like a nice long dry spell of like nothing, but I was still making content every single day, like still oh. posting, just trying to keep um, consistency doing it daily. is Cons- key. Man. Yes, exactly. Consistency is key. Well, and then when it comes sudden, to that kind of stuff, like not a lot of people do that. Not a lot of people mm-hmm. have that skill. That's such a that's such a, a specific thing. So, like, it, it makes the fact, the, the, the magic, with the fact that you're very likable, mm-hmm. I think that it makes for a fun follow. I think, uh, I don't use the app very much, but when I go on, I'll see your stuff. Uh, the thing was, I didn't know. I think I was like, we went. We were like at the Poconos or something. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I you know what is, you know what it is is like I don't. I've always been somebody that doesn't like to push it out there. Right. I like to kind of build something up before I start. I'm. I usually talk a lot, and then sometimes I don't follow through. So then I kind of like learn to just keep my mouth shut, and just do it, and then have people see it, kind of thing like that. I think. Well, that's 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 a very respectable trait. Uh, honestly, honestly, it's something I've lived by for a long, long time. Uh, I, I've said it on this podcast a million times, so anybody who's listening has heard me say it before, uh, and you don't want to hear me say it again, hit the fast-forward 15 seconds button. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's an author who made a book called Think and Grow Rich. His name is Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill inspired what's known as the law of attraction and the secret and all that, all that stuff. It's sort of spiral off of Napoleon Hill. And in in that, he said... Tell the world what you're going to do. Show them first. So that kind of made me outside of like promising the world I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and then not delivering on the promise. You know, that, that, that sort of inspired me also to not announce myself as things. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't tell you I'm funny. I don't tell you I'm smart. Because if I tell you I'm funny and I tell you I'm smart, and then I don't make you laugh and I just say stupid stuff, then I look like a liar. Right. I'd rather. I'm so sorry. It comes back to like, for me, it comes back to, I think when people say that they're going to do something, it makes them feel, it almost makes them feel like they already did the thing because they said, Oh, I'm going to do this. I think think it has to do with some sort of like motivation. Like it, it, it serves as a motivation for them somehow, but like they, they, they haven't had enough people like, weaponize their their goals against them <laughs> when people mm-hmm. doubt you and sometimes when people doubt you you go all oh, right well they've convinced me that i suck so instead of giving people the opportunity to convince you that you suck go be great i kind of like being doubted though i think it's a good feeling because it's like well guess who's going to show you wrong in the next few months or whatever or next year or five years or however long it takes yeah. It's the process because I, you know, it's funny. I see a lot of content creators that make content, and recently a lot of people are saying that they've been getting a lot less views on the app for some reason. 
And they're like, well, I don't feel like posting anymore because I'm not getting any more views. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's 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 your fault. Like, I'm going to keep posting whether I get like 50 views or 5000 views. It's not going to it's not about the views. It's not about it's it's not about the views. It's not that's I would I would have stopped doing this podcast a long time ago Mm -hmm. if it was about that. It was it's about it's about like having having a message, having a having a a voice on having a perspective. Uh, It's about. You know, maybe changing somebody's mind about something that they didn't know that they didn't know something or maybe exactly. teaching them something they didn't know. And that's and and to me, uh, I always say this about this podcast and I'll, I'll probably probably segue that into the next segment. I always say that this stuff is outliving us, dude. Like, so, you know, I started I started recording this podcast like four years ago and around that time i had um my mom had burnt onto a cd uh voicemails that were left from her mother who had passed and her best friend who had passed and she said to me you know how when people die you kind of forget what their voice sounds like and i was like you know what i don't want that i don't want you to forget me i don't want you to forget like this if this outlives me this is like sort of my legacy a little bit so uh, you can go back and you can listen back to like who I was at 33 and like every year up until I'm not here anymore. And like maybe, maybe, maybe no one listens to it now, but it outlives me. And let's say 20 years after I've passed away, it's like a viral thing and everybody's, everybody's, everybody's into it. I'll feel like I've accomplished something. Like mm-hmm. I feel like that's an accomplishment. If somebody can be inspired by something I said, 20 years from now let, i'll take it you know what i mean so exactly. i don't No, that's great and it's also like my i had a, i had a friend on here who who had passed since he's been on here but i had the opportunity while he was on here to go hey to me you're a superstar and i cherish you and i love you and i value our friendship and uh, now that he's passed i go back and listen to that and i feel better I feel, I feel it helped it like, it like gave me a little bit of closure. I don't want to say closure, but it helped me cope, you know? And, 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 and I, and I have that for his family. What if his, what if his, his daughter finds that in 20 years and she's like, oh man, well, he was, he was a really great guy, you know? So I, I, yeah, it's more about the sincerity. Mm Mm-hmm than the yeah. amount of people listening or the people watching because uh, I'm going to continue to do it whether or not anyone's listening. No, no, I tell, yeah, I totally agree. And I, I kind of hit a plateau for the last few months as well from September on of pretty much nothing, but like, I'm still enjoying it. And like my regular, I guess you could call them fans are coming back. Cause I like back in September, I think I had another few viral videos and then I hit 155 156 I'm at now 156,000 followers so it's it's really just it's it's not again it's not about you know all the I mean mean, don't get me wrong I do get a little caught up in that sometimes I'm like well why isn't that one going why isn't that getting more and then I'm like I take a step back and I'm like wait a second relax it's okay it's just it's not important in the grand scheme of things I can get bogged up in the statistics as well like I'm like Mm -hmm. oh oh, why why there's nothing like why I do this and put them, I put them on my YouTube page as well, mm-hmm. right? So like the 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 audio downloads, they're, they're nothing impressive, but they 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 exist. But if I, when I put them on YouTube, I look back the look back at the YouTube page, like zero views on it. <laughs> oh wow, okay, yeah, and, and that's fine. I think it's weird because a lot of people are doing audio now. A lot of people don't. Right. I'm a visual person, so like whenever I'm listening to a podcast, I want to watch it. I mm-hmm. like seeing the facial expressions and things that are happening mm-hmm. like that, you know, in the actual podcast itself. I yeah, I'm, I, I'm like that. I kind of like that with like Joe Rogan, which everybody's like that now with Joe Rogan. You can just watch it and listen to it at the same time. It's not just audio or just video anymore. It's both on Spotify. Yeah. This episode brought to you by Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> That's Joe Rogan gave me some of his millions to... <laughs> to promote oh, his that's podcast. so nice of him to do that. Isn't it? Wow. <laughs> you know, he's he's like, I heard you he's, I heard you over there complaining about not getting anybody listening or watching your show. Uh I get I get 
ninety thousand downloads a month on. <laughs> I did. Oh, I, I did hear. Him. I did hear him on Aubrey Marcus's podcast, um, where he did say that he gets really blown away when he looks at that number. That he's like, "Man, I gotta, re- I gotta really be careful about what I say and how I say it, because like I'm affecting people. I'm affecting pe- like uh, ninety thousand people per month are listening, or nine hundred thousand people per month are listening to his voice and his opinions. So he's got to be." careful to not like spread hate messages and stuff yeah it's a scary thing especially in today's cancel culture he's got to be super careful he's got to like kind of like walk that tightrope or else he might be screwed over <laughs> well scary. you know what's funny you know what's funny it was just, it was a slow build for him it was a slow build for him so inside of the slow build which i kind of feel like i'm in uh you you have the opportunity to practice for when the stakes are higher when they're lower Mm-hmm. Right. You have the opportunity to go like, well, this will be the, the kind of stuff that necessarily isn't, you know, isn't 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 squeaky clean, but it's safe. It's safe enough for it to not be misconstrued. Hopefully. Sure. So PG-13 esque. Right. Or right. PG, whatever. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sometimes I'll throw some some curse words, but most of the time it's the guests and I don't mind that that, mm-hmm. that they happen. Sure. I mean, yeah. we just talked about a fellatio, fellating yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fun. Why not? <laughs> Why not fellate yourself? If you can do it, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'll do I... it right now. You know, like whatever. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. S- send send the send us the pics. We want to see. Yes, yeah. Kinda... yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, put them up on the screen right now. For... <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, yeah, check it out. <laughs> no, it's not happening at all. <laughs> private time stuff do you think that there's people who can do that what's that fillet themselves that's i isn't that, that ron jeremy was able to do that was he able to do that i'm pretty sure that's what he was known for like, wow <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right all right well that's it was funny. I speaking of Ron Jeremy, I actually met him. Yeah. He was we were doing a movie called How to Get Girls. Mm-hmm. And I was just background extra in it back in 2016. This is like years ago. It was like mm-hmm. this really, really raunchy teen comedy movie. Mm-hmm. It was like really weird. And he ended up being in the movie, but they ended up cutting him out of the movie because mm-hmm. apparently that he got canceled, of course, which mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. Him being right. him, he got canceled. So he got scrapped from the movie but he was there at this shoot one day at this pool it what, was so weird what did he get canceled for uh, i'm pretty sure it was just like trying to get you know women or whatever like just like hitting on women oddly on set or things like that just like trying to use his power to get what he wants kind mm-hmm. of thing like using I his mean, name it's like not surprising that he would try to do that like you go mm-hmm. oh well he's just like uh, he is just what he is. I mean, you think people would just let that stuff roll off of them when it came to him? Yeah, he, he's just a weird guy overall. He's just like disgusting looking. I don't even know how he got that far in the, that industry, honestly. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, he gives me the heebie jeebies, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 did, I did background work on a show where somebody was playing, where somebody was playing Ron Jeremy. What? Uh, somebody was acting as Ron Jeremy. Um, it was the guy, he was in like 10 Things I Hate About You, and he was like, he was um, Bernard the Elf in Santa Claus. Oh, that guy shoot. was playing okay. Ron Jeremy in uh, an HBO series called The Deuce. Okay. <laughs> but I, 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 I saw him. I, I don't, I don't, I want to, I don't want to say I met him. I was on set with him. Right. Because I was, I was, just I was just an extra. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the peasant work again. Back peasant to the peasant life. <laughs> oh, but, so good. Uh, uh, what What has gotten you through? Like, what's the stuff that you're like that you're up to in the quarantine? Like, what's the what's the the stuff that you've been watching? What's gotten you through it? What do I watch, dude? I it's weird. I watch a lot of YouTube. I don't watch. I'm not like a big TV show or movie person. Mm-hmm. 
But I do enjoy some trash reality TV. I really do. I like. I watched a little bit of Hell's Kitchen. I love me some Gordon Ramsay yelling at chefs for no reason. He's making a big scene out of things. Uh, funny enough, I do watch The Bachelor every once in a while because I like. I think it's funny. I think of the storylines and the way they edit everything is pretty solid. I like the way that they create stories in there, out of nothing, mm-hmm. and create drama out of nothing, which I think right. is great. Right. It's a craft, man. It's a it's a real craft. Like to yeah. be an an editor or producer of a reality show is such a craft. Like yeah, to, there's to be able to milk 80, the the drama out of something. Yeah, they're taking like eighty hours of footage and trying to cram it down to like an hour or two hours. It's right. it's absolutely berserk. And trying to create storylines out of that, like and trying to create some type of drama that like it could just be as simple as somebody taking somebody else's drink. And they turn it into this whole like ten minute like drama thing with and, and they play they hype up the music and stuff to make it seem like it's the biggest thing that could have happened that week, and it's like not even anything crazy. Dude, or they'll they... take somebody else's words and like twist <laughs> them in, in a certain way to make it sound like they're saying something else or that they're looking at something. It's it's crazy. Go ahead, I'm sorry. They they, they turned like the build up to the one girl's wedding in the Jersey Shore into like four episodes and it was like nothing happened oh it was just <laughs> like they were just getting psyched for this girl's wedding like the bachelor party are these people going to show up to her bachelorette party and it became a whole episode how do you make mm-hmm. a whole episode out of out of who's going to go to your bachelor party that's what happens when you don't have a lot to work with so you gotta <laughs> you gotta create something with what you have <laughs> that's when you gotta go back in those uh those little talking head interviews and start pulling stuff and start, you know, creating some type of weird drama esque, you know, episode. You know, what's funny. We at the same, you and I at the same time, we're both, uh, speaking with casting for a reality series. Yes, we were. Let's not and say the series. In I'm, case not gonna say I'm not going to say, yeah. I'm not going to say it, but you were like, here's the thing though. We're going to have to delete each other off of yes. Facebook and act like, we don't know each other. And I was like, yep. we're friends on Facebook. I didn't know that we were. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying in general, like it, it's, right. you don't want them because they're going to go through your phones. They're right. going to go through your stuff and, and just to make sure you're normal or whatever and see what you're saying. So like, you'd have to delete everything, like any trace of us ever having any type of conversation, like archive, delete even pictures off Instagram and stuff. Like, so, so now that you've decided that you would like to be a guest on my podcast, we're absolutely never going to get cast on the same reality series. So, yeah, we're screwed now. Yeah, that's it. We're, we're totally screwed. This is, uh, we're, we're signing our, our consent to not be on any reality series. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Together. Together, at least. Together. together yeah. Like, if we're on the same show, but different seasons, like, that's cool. Well, I, gu- I guess. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, they were like, oh, uh, oh wh- what's your connection with the show? I'm like, oh, my friend Nick was on last season. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's literally, yeah, that's literally what it would be. But then I don't know. That might actually be a leg up, honestly. A leg like if up. You had a friend. If you had a friend that was on it, because mm-hmm. then that might kind of push you above. Um, yeah. So it, it's weird. The show. I applied for it twice. The mm-hmm. first season and then the second season. And the first season, I ended up having like an in-person interview in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which I did not do good at at all. I felt just so out of place, like awkward. I just felt. It was like really the first time I've ever done like a casting interview in a while. So I felt very stiff and like I felt like I rehearsed too much instead of just like letting loose and just saying whatever came to my mind, which is what they're looking for most mm-hmm. of the time. Right. And I tried my best this next time. I think I did pretty good, but still not up there yet. And so I'll just apply again. Keep applying. You just don't stop. So I think a familiar <laughs> face is a good thing. You know, I, I, uh, I've, I've had probably like three or four besides this one like mm-hmm. close encounters with reality tv shows i had uh i i had gone to i'd gone to a casting thing for the real world back when i was young enough what? back when i was young no enough way. okay to to be a part of that show mm-hmm. uh, and then i did a casting i did a group casting where i was like back and forth texting with um the ink master people they were going to oh, have shit. The, as one of the canvases on Ink Master. Oh, that's and they were sick. Like, and they're like, oh, tell us your ideas that you might have for something you'd want to get tattooed. And I had this idea for, like, um, 
oh, man, I can't even remember what it was, but it was like a, it was like a, okay, now I remember. It was a, it was a heart, like a anatomy heart, but with like a hand grenade, like a hand grenade, um, hand grenade uh, pattern on it when a, and a pin. So it was a, a hand grenade heart. Oh, that, and, that, that would look awesome. And they were like, oh, that's so great. You, and you'd want to get that on our show? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we want that. We want that. And they like had me come there and they were like, where do you want it? And I was like, I don't know, anywhere. I don't, I don't care. Let's do it anywhere. And, and then they were like, okay, cool. Well, we're going to have a meeting with the producers and we're, we're going to call you. And then they called me and they were like, all right, you're on the show. And I was like, okay, cool. And then they were like, but it's a different challenge. It's not that it's not the hand grenade heart thing. It's going to be, there's going to be four artists working on you at the same time where one's going to be on your one leg. One's going to be on the other leg. One's going to be on your one arm and one's going to be on the other arm. And they're all doing animal prints. That's oh. And and I was like, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> if it was the thing I wanted, maybe. But yeah. the, I don't want animal prints on me. Yeah, they get you all invested and they, yeah. they do a 180 on you last second. Yeah. So that sucks. And I I probably told this story on here a million times, but uh, I I I did I did um I got flown to Chicago to be on an episode of Jerry Springer. No way. Oh, I um, love this. And this is like this is like probably like two thousand nine or something, um, where they they had like they had like booked us to come and they, it was like m me and the girl that I was with at the time, we like made up this story of how we got together. The, the producers like worked with us in making up this story. Oh and, shit. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, they, so yeah. you just, so, they were looking for characters. And well, they, you guys they, sat down they tapped into speaking to independent pro wrestlers. So they oh, okay. got us and you know, um, she was also an independent wrestler and they were like, Oh, well, Another another group of wrestlers had reached out to her to do the show, and and they were like, "Listen, the producers are going to call you. They're smart to it. They're smart to that it's a work. They're smart to that it's a fake story. But they want you to sell them on the fact that it isn't a, a story. So when they call you, keep kayfabe on the story. So wow, the producer was like, "How do you know?" How do you know Sammy and Drake? And she was like, oh, we're all pro wrestlers. And they asked me if I would do the show and act like I was their girlfriend or so something like that. And and the lady was like, no, no. Listen, I get what you're trying to do, but tell me who you are. Tell me who you really are. And then she then she was like, uh, are you in a relationship? And she was like, yeah. And then she was like, let me speak to your boyfriend and put me on the phone. And like I, me and the producer like made up the whole story. And, and then like she called back and we sold it. Like it was the real story. Oh, that's great. Oh, so, Oh my gosh. So you, Oh wow. So you guys made it. She called back and then that's what they recorded that next right, part right, to send right. off to the, wow. And, oh, and I, then this is what I, I love this. And we, we, they, they flew us to Chicago and they they picked us up from the airport in a limo and brought us to a Hilton, like a really really nice hotel. Uh, we got fed, we got the continental breakfast at the Hilton, and the <laughs> what a and then steal. We, then uh, then the limo picked us up from the from the uh, the hotel, brought us to the studio. They put us in wardrobe, which was really cool. They, the clothes they put me in were cool. I liked them. And then like so they picked out your clothes too. You didn't yeah. wear just nope. whatever. No, wow. I, I, and uh, so then they then they would like like there was crafty back there, and there was like catering came back. They like had the Chicago pizzas, oh. and I was like, whoa! I never had Chicago. I had never been to Chicago before that. So, uh, so the, the, we were slated to be the very last story because they liked it the most. They were like, oh, this is gonna be like the main story for this episode. But the episode, the the story that was right before us, there was this like seven foot tall lady, and she like beat the crap out of her boyfriend, uh, and and their story their story went too long, and they were like, oh, we're gonna have to have you guys come back 
we're gonna have to have have you come back to do yours because we ran out of time to record and we're like oh yeah we'll totally come back and then we didn't go back why didn't you go back because we got we got we got we got the benefits of it without actually having to be on the jerry springer show oh okay okay so i have that story now i have that that's a great story oh that's a great story (laughs) but but i i didn't want to go back oh my gosh that would be crazy though yeah you're on it like that's like all those like court shows and stuff right well we we also got we also got reached out to by the divorce court to do an episode of the divorce court and i totally forgot about that when you said the court shows they had us they had like interviewed us to do that as well and then we broke up before we got to do it oh shoot that (laughs) that would have been perfect though at that point (laughs) (laughs) it would have been some real drama (laughs) right (laughs) <laughs> but uh That's i think cool. that might have been it as far as reality reality series go but there might be more that i'm forgetting because like like i said i didn't even remember about that divorce court mm-hmm. thing until just now so maybe yeah, there's that's more. cool though so yeah but, I, it's weird i kind of want to do reality tv before i transition into actual acting because i'm afraid that once i do get into acting because i'm eligible for sag now um, mm-hmm. so it's like, I'm afraid if I sign up for that, I won't be able to do reality because reality is non-union. Right. So I don't know if I, what, you know, if I'd get in trouble or not. So that's why I want to try reality first and then jump into the whole acting thing afterwards. Well, I mean, is there, is there a middle ground there? I mean, I, I'm, I'm also myself eligible for SAG, but I, I'm not joining I'm because not joining yet. I'm not joining because there's nothing happening. Right. You know, yeah, I don't, no, there's no way I'm joining as of right now, at least. Yeah, there's nothing really going on right now. So I'll just mm. uh, until until things come back, I'll just get like whatever non-union stuff I can get until like the world's kind of normal or. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of normal. That would be great. Kind of normal or <laughs> is is the adjective. Yeah, <laughs> it's a perfect way to describe it. <laughs> right. Perfect way. It's perfect describer. Yeah. Normaler, N- normaler. Yeah, I like that even better. Normaler. I can see that in a dictionary. <laughs> that should be in the dictionary. Yeah, totally. But, uh, there's too many people who uh, are wrapped up in like telling you, like correcting, like your incorrect things. Yeah. So it, it, it's the the your you use the wrong your. Right. Like, I get it, but like at the same time, like are we really gonna nitpick this? Like, I mean. If, like, the person's making a stupid point and, like, you disagree with it, sure, maybe, like, nitpick their your thing just to kind of, like, mess with them. But, like, in the grand scheme of things, are we really going to nitpick what people say and how they say it? Like, <laughs> yeah, they, people, people were like, oh, you, forgive me. I'm kind of a grammar Nazi. I'm like, you just compared yourself to a Nazi. Like, yeah. <laughs> maybe you need to calm down. Yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> I don't have to work on the way I spell things. Right. Like, do you think right, that I, people who are grammar Nazis are also anti-semantics. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a, that's an interesting question. I, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't push it that far. I, I don't think it's that bad, but I think that maybe they're, they're, they're toting on the line there. And uh-huh. I think that they're, they're close to it. <laughs> They're transitioning into that. <laughs> so tell me about the holiday season. I want to uh, kind of get a little bit of uh, a little bit of inside of it because I, I mean, I just saw it peripherally through Joe's big long posts. Oh, that uh, was great. We had fun. We went. So it was funny. Uh, a while ago, he had t- contacted me saying that Harry Houdini and David Copperfield were being inducted into the Jewish Historical Society Museum in Philadelphia. I think that's what it's called. I might be wrong, but so they were having this big like event for it, and they were going to be no, live streaming the event. It's, it's pronounced Philly. Philly you were Philly, saying, yes, huh? Philly. That's right, Philly. Yeah, you're right, <laughs> Philly, Philly. So, uh, so they had this big event, and like, so I was supposed to go hang out with them, uh, and then I got this other job, and then I like left the job, and I wasn't interested in doing the, the work. So then I contacted him back. I was like, hey, let's go, let's do this. So I went over to his place, and we. We celebrate. We celebrate Hanukkah. I had so much fun. Like I've never had any type of other experience except for Christmas. 
So mm-hmm. like it was nice to like actually experience Hanukkah with somebody else, like and like learn about that holiday. Mm-hmm. So he let me like light the menorah and everything for the third night. That's awesome. And we celebrated, you know, eating like um, traditional Hanukkah food. Uh, and then we played dreidel, which was a blast. He yeah. gave me like this little dreidel, and we played dreidel for like an hour. I was having a blast playing dreidel. It was so much fun. <laughs> that's a, you can actually get an hour out of playing that. I thought it was I don't just think like... I don't, it was it was a little exaggerated, but <laughs> <laughs> it was it was long enough to feel like that. But it was a blast. We we had we had a really good time, that's and awesome. we sang like traditional Hanukkah songs, which was like I had no idea what I was doing. I tried my best to go along with how he was singing, but yeah. I couldn't read it because it was all in Hebrew. So it mm-hmm. was very difficult for me to play along. If you're <laughs> if you're reading words in Hebrew and you're concerned about the pronunciation, are you also a grammar Nazi? <laughs> well, I wanted to make it right because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be really into the 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 Hanukkah spirit. So like, no, I'm like yeah, trying to I, sing this song, it, it's it's going poorly. I'm trying my best. Uh, I'm, you... I'm like listening to him and like trying to move my lips and mouth to like sound like <laughs> what he's doing. It was it was difficult. You're just moving your mouth. You're not saying anything. Like from know, Elf. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. he was like, that's such a good sick. movie. <laughs> that's awesome. Such a good, I love that movie so much. So good. Well, you got a gallon of water? Yeah, dude. You drink a gallon of water a day? Yeah. Sometimes more. I'm, I'm a real meathead. I, oh, I got I to stay hydrated. You got to keep them insides wet, bro. <laughs> Stay, stay. Uh, That's a lot, though. I don't know if I could do a gallon. Well, I pee a lot. I pee a lot too, and it's not even like I don't even drink that. I mean, I should be drinking more water, but I mean, I think it's just like I, I drink iced tea and then like regular hot tea. I just got into hot tea recently, which is great. I was Nick, drinking a lot of me, that on. Set. Let me sell you on the best tea that exists, the best hot tea that exists. And I just so happen to have a box of it right here. Oh, this it's, is great. It's like I'm sponsored by this tea company. It's it's called Bengal Spice Tea by okay. Celestial Seasonings. Uh, okay, it's, Bengal Spice. It, bur, Bengal Spice caffeine-free herbal tea. Oh, it's caffeine. Oh, do they have caffeine? I don't know. Okay. But um, it's, it's, it's like... Um, it's it kind of tastes like a candle, like how good a candle smells. It I don't kinda... know if I want to. I don't know. I don't know if I want to drink wax. Like I don't think that's like. <laughs> it, it tastes <laughs> as good as a candle smells. I mean, not if you were to eat yeah. a candle. I don't think you'd get the same effect. Mm-hmm. But it has it it it's like a warm candle. It has that that feel to it. It's really mm-hmm. really. But I <laughs> yesterday I got a, a a shipment from Amazon. I had ordered it. And I knew I had just run out of it, and they, and I thought I ordered two boxes like this, and I actually ordered two full cases of this. So oh. I, have, I have twelve of these. Yeah, you're set for the next like year yeah. or whatever. <laughs> right. So, um, after this, I'm 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 leaving to go to Carly's, and I'm bringing her. Oh, nice. A case. I'm oh, bringing her. Very nice of you. Case. Very nice so, of you to think of her like that. <laughs> that's great. So, so um. What I want to do is I want to I want to do a segment that I, I I'm only going to do two more things and then yeah. then I'll I'll send you off with a hand a handshake and a hot dog you just go off into the sunset but hypothetically so I was saying to you I like hypothetical stuff yeah so yeah. I was saying to you about how this stuff is outliving us you know so say 20 30 years from now wherever you are wherever you are wherever you whatever happens to you between now and then um someone has someone has stumbled across this recording to find out what nick raphael is really like uh, to see what message is so in this i'm calling it audio time travel in this take yourself directly to that person who cares about you and wants to hear what you're like and you're giving them a message directly from 2020 Wow, that's that's deep. Is this so? Now, who does it? Is, matter so what their age like is? Your, it like, like if it's your mom, 
your girlfriend, your best friend, your siblings, your kids, your nephews, your nieces, mm -hmm. anybody who cares about you, when you're speaking to that person right now. Well, I think the biggest thing I'd like to say is that I think regret is poison. And that's one of the things that like drives me personally. And because I don't want to get to when I get older and I look back on my life, I don't I'm afraid of having regrets. So I think that's the thing that drives me. And I, I think the three biggest words of motivation, and this is going to sound pretty dark, but I think it's true. You're going to die is the three words. You're going to die. And yeah. that's, that's, some Gary v, that's some Gary V shit. That's literally what it is. That's yeah. what it is. So like that, that wakes me up and scared me. Uh -huh. So like, I think that's like one of the biggest things that drives me is that like, it's, you know, I, I only have one of these, I only have one of these lives, but I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to waste it. I don't want it to go to waste. So I want to experience as much as I possibly can. And I hope that for whoever's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, don't waste, don't waste your resources right now. Your resources are the, the electricity that's firing in your brain that are keeping you alive. If you're wasting that energy on things that don't serve your overall being and your overall message and your, your overall greatness, then why are you wasting that, that spark? Exactly. And don't, I, don't, I waste, don't waste your spark. <laughs> right. And I think we're all victims of this sometimes. We all you know, do dumb things that we shouldn't be doing and wasting time. And then we look back on it like, like, wow, that was a waste of time. I shouldn't have done that. Like, and the, you know, it's just, it's not good. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> don't waste your hate. Rather, gather and create. Be of service. Be a sensible person. Use your words and don't be nervous. You can do this. You got purpose. Find your medicine and use it. Who, whose poem is that? Is that? Did you just write that off the? No, that's uh, Nako, Nako, uh, Nako, and medicine for the people. Mm -hmm. That's one of one of my favorite one of my favorite musical groups. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's just... it's not heavy metal, so Carly doesn't listen to it. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. She is only only heavy metal. Right. Yeah. But uh, so I I like to do this at the end of every show. Um, the the you know how I said like I like to I like to encourage my friends to to start their own podcasts mm -hmm. have an opportunity to to sort of like change what you might think about things or change out the way other people think about things your your voice is uniquely yours so in this segment hypothetically i'm gifting this show to you right so this has been your pilot episode of your podcast evolving with nick Raphael. Oh, i love this this is great uh, so <laughs> in this moment in kind of like a Jerry Springer's final thought, you I take that's that's amazing. <laughs> you you take however long you want to just put a pretty little bow on what this conversation has meant and what people can do to be inspired to be a better version of themselves tomorrow. Wow, oh, that's 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 pretty deep. That's <laughs> wow. Uh, so wow, where do I start? Like, honestly, first of all, you like you reaching out and saying that you wanted me on the show was like the first thing I was like, I was I freaked out. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is super exciting. And then like awesome. it took me forever to get back to you because I was just yeah. I'm terrible at texting. So it's like That's, I'm like very I, bad at that. But it's something I, I got to work on as a human being. Can I, I, I'm tell you something I practice and hopefully this helps you. I've learned to take it way less personally. Like it's not it's not me that you're not getting back to it's that like there's a whole bunch of things that everybody's doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's not like oh it's not like you're going oh, fuck Corey. i don't care about that you know what i mean it's more like you're like oh well like life is hectic for everybody yeah so i i don't take it personally especially like i mean i've been doing this this podcast for for four years but i've been doing wrestle ra rock for five years and so many times you're like you go to like set something up with somebody and it falls through. Like that's why that's also part of like why I, I never announced who's going to be my guest on something. I've never gone like, Oh, on this week on the podcast, we're going to yeah. have, cause you don't this, want, you don't want right. to excite everybody and then screw it. And then it not, and then it not come through. Like we had, 
we had on on the wrestling podcast, Wrestle Rock. We had a uh, we had Jerry Lawler as a guest. We never announced that that was going to happen. Yeah, Jerry Lawler was just on the podcast, and we're like, "Look at this! This is the biggest guest we'll ever have." Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's sick. That's actually pretty sick. So, so uh, continue with your with your uh, your wrap up of evolving with Nick Raphael. Yeah, so this is huge. I, I appreciate you for one inviting me on, and like, I because we haven't spoken in a while, so I appreciate this hysterical conversation from uh, filleting yourself to <laughs> to just like talking about any anything and everything, reality TV yeah. experiences that we had in life, and I think that's I think that's something we take for granted too. Like we don't, I think we as human beings we need to learn to live in the moment. I mm-hmm. think we're always thinking, what's next? What's the future? What's the future? What what's gonna happen? Or we are stuck in our minds in the past or thinking about, Oh, that conversation we had last week with that guy in that store that probably thinks I'm really weird for looking him at him the wrong way or saying something bad to him. And now he thinks I'm a crazy person, but like I I'm trying to learn to live in the present. I still sometimes think about the future and it freaks me out and I get nervous and I think about the past and I overthink, but like, I'm really, really trying to just like live in that moment. And I think, I was able to do that today just with mm-hmm. conversation, which really helps. I just kind of forgot about everything that's going on around me and just focused on our conversation. I think that's what most people should and try to strive for. I think that's ideally what I'd like to accomplish with this show. But it's like so often, so often, like we've we've got to we've got to scratch for every itch. Like we don't know something, we can just pull our phone out and and Google it. Like instead of instead of using IMDb for like finding out, I'm like, oh, where's this person from? I'm watching a show. Oh, what what other movies this person from? Like instead of looking it up right away, I'll I'll like just try to remember. I'll try to like think about it, and like if it's long enough and I haven't figured it out, I'll just not know. And wow, and uh, I don't need I don't need the I don't need the it's scratched. That it doesn't like, bother you. I, it's it's like I'd rather figure it out on my own. However, I love IMDb. I love looking mm-hmm. at IMDb. I love looking up people, but sometimes I just rather would be able to think about it. Because a lot of times I figure it out. A lot of the times I, I figure it out. Most of the time I figure it out. But the times when I don't figure it out, I'll just I'll get I'll catch up with it later. See, I like that though, because it uh, that's great. It's just leave it to the mystery, you know, like leave it to just not knowing. And it's okay not to know things. It's okay. Right. Like it doesn't, you don't have to know everything. Right. Mitch That's Hedberg, great. Mitch Hedberg did this bit where he would say, I'm tired of following my dreams. I'm just going to ask them where they're going and I'll catch up with them later. Oh, that's good. I'm, I, that's a great quote. I might, so, I might, oh my gosh, I might like write that down it, and have it use down. It. Yeah, that's great. Dude, if you could, if there's any, thing that i ever say that you can use Mm -hmm. use it use it absolutely like why would i not why would i talk into a microphone and say things that other people can use and then not want them to use it Mm -hmm. so that's true absolutely use it definitely true um so the other thing i was saying was uh the 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 effort the, the, there's a, such currency in in your attention and your effort. So the fact that you were able to give me this this hour to just just kind of like distraction free hour, you paid me in the currency of your attention and your effort, and I appreciate it. And I have such respect for you and such love for you. And I'm so glad. On the record, I can tell you, I would love to be any resource for you that I can be. If you ever need to speak to somebody, if you just need a friend or anything, if you need somebody for something, reach out to me. I'm always around. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate it. This is like really the first time that we've ever actually like talked for a long period of time. Yeah. Like, I mean, yes, we've hung out together, but it was yeah, always, it's it, been in a big group setting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's hard to really just like to get to know somebody and really yeah. like understand them. And this was perfect. Like. Yeah. And you're saying I paid you. No, you paid me as well. So it's like it's it's well, a joint like, payment. You, we you got exchanged. to record your first episode of your yeah. podcast. Mm-hmm. You got it's to huge. get your now. You did your pilot episode. Now you got to get out there and pitch it. Yeah, I got to. Yeah, now I, yeah, damn, I got to go out and start pitching to everybody. So this is huge. But 
But I really do think, you know, I do think that you have a, a perspective and a voice that's unique enough that you should have a voice to have your own podcast. And mm -hmm. if I can help you with that in any way, if you really seriously ever thought about doing something like that, I would absolutely be willing to help you. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just have to figure out what I would want to do it on. That's all. And just like figure out maybe some sort of, uh, you know, niche topic of some right. sort, or it could just be anything, you know, whatever. I'll, 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 I'll figure something out and then we'll, we'll, we'll chat. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I appreciate I, it though. I did, I did it out of order. Normally I wrap it up by asking you uh, about doing that, that Jerry Springer's final thought thing. But I normally throw in at some point, I'll, I'll ask you this and then we can kind of wrap it up on this. Okay. Is there any questions or things that you might want to ask me? Anything that you've always wondered about or uh, stuff, maybe, maybe just like questions about wrestling or something, uh, whatever. That's really what, what my mind went to. Why right. wrestling? But what was it about that that intrigued you? Um, what I liked about wrestling was, like, I was not a sports fan. Never been a sports mm -hmm. fan. I don't really like sports. Um, but... This was a thing that was like a sport, but it was like a movie, too. So there was character work, and there was like, you watched it, and it was manipulating your feelings. It was making you feel things. And I liked being able to watch it and feel things and have it be a part of that story. And I wanted to be able to do that for other people. I wanted to be able to manipulate feelings and understand like a bigger like a bigger picture in in uh human behavior i guess and uh that's i mean it's kind of like magic it's, it's like we have our own code of magic we call it we call it kayfabe in wrestling but okay that's Wait, what's uh, what does that stand for or what is that like a like a, oh code of oh okay okay i okay so it's like basically like the secret behind yeah kind of okay. i mean it's K A Y F A B E. Um, I don't know where the word came from, but it's no, it's basically like back in the day when the business was protected. Like it's not really protected anymore. If a good guy was hanging out with a bad guy outside of the building, and they were supposed to hate each other, they would be breaking kayfabe, and someone go, "Hey, kayfabe," and they they disperse or they would start fighting outside to sell the illusion to the people oh. who oh oh that's so cool like that's so <laughs> oh man i love that's what i love i love the storylines behind wrestling uh, that's yeah. what i was always interested in because not only do you have to be good at the actual wrestling part but mm -hmm. an actor as well and mm -hmm. selling that to the entire crowd you, it, almost like theater actors like they're selling it to all of these people in this mm -hmm. huge stadium or at communities or wherever, whatever league of wrestling you're in, you have to sell it to the crowd. Well, and I've never wrestled. Love. I've never wrestled in stadiums before, unfortunately. But it's not over yet. I've, I've wrestled. I've wrestled in lots of bingo halls, and <laughs> yeah. VFWs and armories and stuff. But stadiums are next, man. It's not over yet. <laughs> who's who says it is over? It's never I, over. I mean, what well, when it gets normaler? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. talk about. <laughs> nah, but I want to once again thank you, man. I, I I'm a, I'm gonna post this up probably next Monday, and uh, we'll, you know, every Monday. That's why I'm, I'm saying it so that anybody listening, if this is your first time listening to the show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. New episodes come out every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, there is a catalog of 209 other episodes. You can go on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and any, uh, anywhere where you subscribe and enjoy quality podcasts, uh, make, sure, make sure to rate and review and subscribe. I feel so insincere in saying these things because all I really care about is the fact that you're going to get something out of it. So all those things are things that like are the, the required, you got to say it. But I, I very much want to be able to provide you the service of listening to the podcast and hearing 
my heart and my sincerity and my passion for evolving. That's a great way to close out, man. I love that. I think it's it's important though. Like you need to get that out there so that people can come and then be inspired. <laughs> well, I I hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, thanks for thanks for doing this, Nick. Uh, it's been lovely, and I hope we can do it again. I like to do follow ups every, you know. I I have. I repeat guests tons of times. So Love that. absolutely, let's do it again. Well, I'd like to check back in, see where you have evolved in six months, a year, something like that. I'd like to check back in. So let's absolutely. I see what you, do I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, man. Corey, I appreciate you having me on. I had so much fun chatting with you. All right, man. I appreciate you, man. Have a great night. Be fun, yeah. have safe, and keep evolving. All right.